What's up? My name is Charles and I'm going to show you two ways to roast squash. Squash. These are two kinds of squash. This is a butternut squash and this is an acorn squash. They have a similar flavor, definitely different and they both have seeds. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove those seeds. It's very easy to do, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. First thing you may notice about these squash is that they are round. So you want to be careful when cutting them. They are also a little bit slippery. These skins can get a little bit slippery. So just keep that in mind as you cut. And to begin, I usually start by topping and tailing our squash. Then I like to cut it in half. The bottom half contains the seeds and the top half is just some meat. Before I slice this in half to remove the seeds, I'm going to remove the skin. Now, when it comes to removing seeds, I like to use a spoon. I put my finger like this and I just go in and I just scoop them right out. You can easily roast these seeds and I'm gonna show you how to do that, of course. When I was working at my parents' restaurant, we used to work with butternut squash all the time. And there was a little bit of a superstition with this one because some of the worst cuts I saw, most of the worst cuts I saw were from butternut squash. You can use a potato peeler when you remove the skin, but I saw a lot of cuts with a potato peeler, maybe more than with a knife. And just be sure when you do work with this guy that you try to work on flat surfaces rather than trying to cut this way because this way can roll. acorn squash. This one is going to be even easier and to work with this one I am just going to cut it in half. Now this one is very round so let your knife do the work. See I let my tip bleed and then I put my weight in it. Careful with your finger. See I'm holding like this not this. Keeping my finger back. Weight guides it down. Inside we have this beautiful heart-shaped flesh and some more seeds. We're just going to scoop those out. And we are going to roast those with our butternut squash seeds. Because they're the same size, we can do that. Sometimes you can't do that. And this one, I'm going to roast in the oven. So I'm just gonna leave this in half like this. I love the shape of these. They kind of look like hearts and these are really easy to roast, so I decided to just leave them in half. If you want to, you can cut them into quarters. So you could slice them in half one more time, and they'll just get a little crispier because there's more surface area, and they'll cook a little bit faster probably. Okay, so to prepare our squash, it's very simple. Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of oil in the center, like a little bowl. I'm just using sunflower oil. Next, I am just going to sort of massage that oil around the squash. You don't need much. Just something to protect it so it doesn't dry out. And also give it a little crispness and some golden color.
Okay, now it's time to cook our butternut squash. You can cook these in the oven. That's fine. The preparation would basically be the same as our acorn squash, but they would cook a little bit quicker. Lately, I've been cooking these uh, right over the stove and just pan roasting them. It's very easy to do. It's very quick. And I'm going to show you how I do it right now. Okay, the pan is on. Let's do this. Basically, we're going to use the same ingredients as we did for our acorn squash. I am working over a medium heat. We don't need much oil, but we do want our pan to be kind of hot. Start to hear a slight sizzle, we know it's ready. I'm going to add these in and you don't want to crowd the pan because if we put too many in here, then they will steam. So we just want enough to cover the whole pan, but we don't want any on top of each other. One of the most commonly asked questions I get is, how do you know when your pan is the right heat? And I came up with an answer. Basically, you want a sizzle and not a splatter. When there is a splatter, it's going to make a mess and it indicates that your food is cooking at a high temperature. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do, but it's going to make a mess and you're going to have to keep your eye on that food. Here my pan has a nice sizzle and not a splatter. If I see some splatter, I turn the heat down a little bit. If I stop hearing some sizzle, I turn the heat up. And then you find that sweet spot and just let it ride. See, one of the ideas in cooking is to let the flame do the work. Right now, I have my acorn squash cooking in an oven. I have my butternut squash cooking on the stove. And I'm filming a video. I'm taking the time to talk. And I am in control. And that's because I have found the right temperatures and I'm letting the flame do the work. Every so often, we're going to want to flip our squash to release some of that to unveil some of that beautiful golden brown color. And you want them to cook evenly. So I talk about flipping my pan a lot and basically what you wanna do is just push away and pull back. Push away, pull back. And just kinda give it a flick. These squash are ready when they are tender. You can tell how tender they are by simply pressing them with a fork. Obviously, smaller ones are going to be finished sooner. To be honest with you, the best way to tell if something like this is ready is to just taste it. Just make sure that it's cool first. It should be soft and buttery. You can be certain that these will continue to cook as they cool. So you can leave them a little underdone and let them cool in the pan. Okay, so let's talk about our squash seeds. I like to begin my squash seeds by washing them off. They have this connective fiber that holds them all together. And so by washing them, we're going to separate them and also kind of wash off some of that viscous fluid that's in there and that will help it dry faster. Okay, so my seeds are looking nice and clean. I lost some of them in the sink. We are going to roast these seeds in a pan. There's so much water in here that I don't want to add them into a hot pan with oil. Instead, I'm going to kind of start dry roasting them and add some oil if I need to. Again, over a medium heat. And I can already start to hear them sizzle. We're going to add some salt. 
This will also help to remove some moisture. As you can see, they right away start to sizzle more. These are going to be like little bursts of flavor. And we already put a lot of nutmeg into our squash. So maybe we can try something different and have a different layer of flavor. I am going to use some cayenne. If you want to use some chili powder or some kind of spice rub, now would be a great time. Okay, now that these have a lot of water cooked out of them, I am going to add a little bit of oil to kind of crisp them up a little bit. So by cooking the water out of them in the pan, I basically skipped a step that usually takes a long time. A lot of people will just put these onto a towel or a paper towel and let them dry for a few hours. But in this pan, I was able to do that in just a couple minutes. Okay, these are ready when they have a, an amber color and you can hear them hit the pan differently. I like crispy and before they were soft and kind of airy. We use all of our senses when we cook. Okay, now my pan is off and I'm just going to let these cool in the pan and they will continue to dry and crisp up. Okay, these are our acorn squash after about 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes, just like I said. One of the ways that we can tell the squash is ready is by testing the resistance of the squash. We always talk about resistance when cooking vegetables and basically see the way this knife goes in and out with no resistance. It even goes through the skin with no resistance, see? And it comes right out. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> you probably don't wanna poke a bunch of holes in your squash, but you get the idea. These squash are beautiful and I love them the way they are, but I do wanna get a little bit more crisp on the top. So I'm going to do a little hack and I'm just going to fry them in the pan really quickly with just a touch of butter. Okay, so here I'm just melting some butter, getting my pan ready. You can tell your pan is ready when you just drop some water in and you hear a hiss. It's always a good sign. I'm gonna work over a higher heat this time just to really get some crisp on them. There we go. That's what we're looking for. two ways, two different kinds of squash, and even some crispy, delicious squash seeds. 